Hi guys, here's this week's top crypto news for realtors. The Ethereum merge was successful. Now what? The White House releases framework for digital assets. How do you think that turned out? And Coinbase shares its crypto policy efforts with 103 of its million app users. Hi, I'm Rich Hopin. I'm the creator of Crypto News for Realtors and a real estate broker with Compass in New Jersey. Throughout the week, I monitor the crypto news and major news and crypto publications. I listen to crypto podcasts and I follow the crypto influencers on social. And I sift through it all and write a weekly newsletter with about a thousand active subscribers and a 73% open rate. I write the Crypto Corner for Inman, and I've given crypto presentations to real estate offices around the U.S., and now I'm taking my crypto content and making these YouTube videos. do this for three reasons. Number one, crypto is complex, it's fascinating and evolving quickly, and I believe crypto is going to change our economy and real estate. Two, it's early days in crypto, and I want to position myself as the leader in crypto in my market. And three, I want to share what I've learned with you so you can become the crypto leader in your market. But before I jump into this week's news, if you could do me a huge favor, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and stay up to date on the crypto news. Okay, so let's get into the news. The Ethereum merge was successful. Now what? The crypto world marveled at Ethereum's successful transition to the proof of stake model. The technical feat of the merge was the, quote, biggest event in crypto since the creation of Bitcoin and Ethereum, end quote, according to the Wall Street Journal's quote from John Charbonneau, a researcher at Delphi Digital. This event was almost miraculous because it occurred as Ethereum was running about 3,500 applications and handling billions of dollars of crypto on its platform. And the platform's operations were not disrupted. And I've seen analogies to this was like changing rocket engines mid-flight or replacing the foundation of a large, fully occupied office building. So it was a major accomplishment. In addition to Ethereum cutting its energy use by 99.95%, which is a huge benefit, the network will be faster, cheaper, and attract more developers and investors. Perhaps one of the most significant changes will be that people who hold Ethereum's cryptocurrency, ETH, will be able to earn a yield by quote-unquote staking. And staking is a process whereby the holder relinquishes control of their ETH for a period of time, and during that time they earn interest, and the crypto is used to maintain the network. Bloomberg's opinion columnist Matt Levine, who's amazing, and you should read his stuff, it's free, he wrote in his email called Money Stuff, quote, This is cool. Crypto has rediscovered interest from entirely different principles. In traditional finance, you get interest on your money because you are lending it to someone else to build some productive business. In crypto, you get interest on your money because you are getting paid for maintaining the ledger. End quote. On the downside, offering a yield may cause the Securities and Exchange Commission to characterize Ethereum as a security. SEC Chair Gensler said that staking may meet one of the legal factors under the Howey test because, quote, the investing public is anticipating profits based on efforts of others. And so the significance of this is if it meets the Howey test, that means Ethereum would be considered a security. If something's a security, it's it opens up a whole Pandora's box of requirements, regulations, and costs. It's very problematic. So uh, my response to this is that Gary Gensler, who is in news almost every week, just he couldn't resist. He had to make a statement the day of the merge to piggyback on all that press. And uh, I think it's really opportunistic and quite frankly, pretty lame. Shame on you, Gary Gensler. If you happen to watch this video. Countering Gensler's quote, Jake Chervinsky, head of policy for the Blockchain Association, said, quote, the people who actually understand U.S. securities law will tell you that the merge not only doesn't make ETH appear more like a security, but in fact was a significant de-risking event. White House releases framework for digital assets. The White House issued a report providing high-level policy proclamations on the digital assets. The fact sheet states that nine reports have been submitted to the president as mandated in a March 9th executive order. The blockchain's associate executive director, Kristen Smith, commented, Today's reports and summaries from the Biden administration executive order on digital assets are a missed opportunity to cement U.S. crypto leadership in the U.S. Smith said that the report focused on risks and did not include include any substantive recommendations on how the United States can promote the crypto industry to Americans. NLW, the host of Coindesk podcast, The Breakdown, and by the way, my favorite podcast 
on crypto, and I listen to it every day. So NLW said, the Biden report is neither comprehensive nor a framework. We really need Congress to be in charge of developing the framework for the responsible development of digital assets. Coinbase shares crypto policy efforts with its 103 million app users. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is sharing the crypto policy positions of elected officials with Coinbase's customers. Coinbase customers who use the app will see how their elected leaders feel about the crypto industry. It gives the politicians, quote, crypto sentiment, end quote, and offers advice on how to advocate for change. And this is brilliant. He's really allowing people that are near and dear to crypto, the users, to see what their elected officials say about crypto. And then Coinbase is saying, okay, if you're concerned about this issue, this is how you can get involved. So it's it's, it's a very, very clever move on Coinbase's part. So that's it for this week's news. But before I wrap up, I want to emphasize that this was a historic week for crypto. In this issue of my newsletter, last week's issue, and in my YouTube videos, I've spent a lot of time discussing Ethereum's transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Why? Well, the same reason why I just wrote a very long piece in Inman entitled Playing the Long Game, Here's What's Next for Crypto. In that article, I explained the events that took place in the spring that triggered bankruptcies and the massive crypto sell-off. I dive into the collapse of TerraUSD's stablecoin, Celsius, and Voyager. Agents who want to understand the crypto industry will read articles and continue educating themselves. And that's you. And as crypto matures and home buyers start using crypto, you will be prepared to comfortably discuss crypto with these home buyers and sellers. One other thing, I want you to be aware of bogus buyers claiming to have crypto funds. Over the last five months, I've heard from about six agents around the US about a scam where prospective buyers contact the agent and said they wanted to use crypto to buy a five to $7 million house. Turns out not one of those buyers was a legitimate buyer. The buyer usually makes initial contact via text and tries to move the conversation to WhatsApp or Line, which is a, a fast-growing messaging app. And the buyer is vague about their identity and not willing to talk on the telephone because of their poor English. And if this happens to you, I, I don't want you to waste your time going down this rabbit hole with this hacker. So here's what you need to do to determine if the buyer is a real buyer. Explain, like in any transaction, explain that you need proof of funds and ask for a screenshot of their crypto balance and their public wallet address. If you don't know public wallet address, it's a string of alphanumeric numbers or digits and allows anyone to see the crypto holder's account balance and type of crypto. And any real crypto buyer would happily provide their public address. If this person makes contact with you, you ask them for their public wallet address and they provide it to you, feel free to contact me and I can explain the next steps to verify their identity. Also reach out with any questions. One of the things that I've been wondering is what is this scam? And I don't don't know. But based on one agent's experience, I believe the scam is to get the agent to download software and share some of their personal financial information. So just be careful of that. And thank you for watching my videos. I just launched the crypto content on YouTube and it's been very cool talking about crypto on camera and incorporating visuals into the stories. It adds a new dimension and it lets me deliver my story as if we're having a face-to-face -face conversation. I've heard from several of you, you really like the videos, I've gotten great feedback. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. That's what this is all about. I'm trying to get the word out there and subscriptions are the key metric. So uh, please subscribe. And if you have any crypto topic you want me to cover, um, let me know. I'll dive into it and share what I've learned with everyone else. If you'd like to find out about this week's top crypto resource and influencer, go to my blog by clicking on the link below. Also in this week's crypto class, I write about whether it's feasible for Bitcoin to follow Ethereum by abandoning proof of work and moving to proof of stake. And I tackle the issue of Bitcoin's environmental impact. So check Check it out. If you have any crypto questions or comments, write them below. If there's any crypto topic you'd like me to cover, just let me know. I'll dive into it and I'll share what I've learned with, with everyone else. If you've got a question, I'm sure others do as well. Remember, stay crypto curious. It's still early days in crypto and now it's a great time to become crypto savvy. And if you have any questions about New Jersey real estate, reach out to me. I'll help you out. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great week.